Um, what are your thoughts on, if you have any, about the startups that are actually taking the blood of young people and in injecting it into the bodies of older folks? Uh, so I don't think there's a scientific reason to say it won't work. And the scientists who are involved are some of my great colleagues, uh, very smart people. Have uh, you ever done it? No. no. It's a bit extreme for me, but I think it could work. Right. Uh, it's just a little bit out there for me. A but little. what they're going to do, what they're doing actually is treating people with neurological disorders. Um, a lot of these startups, you know, I, I'm involved in probably 15 startups right now. What we're trying to do is to treat diseases of aging uh, and even rare childhood diseases because you can't treat it aging uh, as a business model. There is no disease called aging yet. Right. Uh, but I, anyway, getting back to the science, I think that it's based on solid science. But the future is, is I think, a, a better way to go about this is to find what the actual molecules are in the blood and just make those. Don't give the whole kit and caboodle. Yeah. When you, you've said this twice. You think aging is a disease or maybe perhaps should be treated as a disease or classified? Oh, I absolutely think aging should be classified as a disease. We should think of it as a disease. I mean, why, why shouldn't we? Everything else that goes on in the body over time that's bad for us is considered a disease. Do, do you know why aging isn't considered a disease? Formally? Because it happens to everybody? Exactly. Mm. That's the only reason. Well, it happens to most people, 90% of people in the developed world. But why is that a reason to say, oh, it's natural, we should just deal with it? We used to say that about cancer, and we used to say it about dying from an infection. When you say it happens to 90% of the people in the developed world, what happens to the other 10? They die? Hit by a bus, I guess. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. So they die young. Yeah. Okay. Just clarifying. Um, uh, yeah, I agree. I mean, it, it's I mean, dis-ease. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a problem, right? Aging's a problem. I, I saw an old gentleman yesterday, and it was painful just to watch this poor guy walk, um, you know, hunched over and just struggling to move at an incredibly slow pace. That seems like a person with a disease. Well, it is. And imagine if we were on a planet now um, or – you know, an island where everybody lives 300 years, uh, and we'd show up, and you and I in our, you know, midlife, we're starting to look old already, and they're going to look at us and say, what is wrong with you guys? We, yeah. we need to treat you urgently. We need to call this a new type of syndrome. Right. And it's only because we all tend to go through this that we think it's acceptable. But I would argue it's the biggest threat to the healthcare system. It's the biggest threat to the world's economy, actually, is the inability of us to treat people in their old age and keep them healthy. Mm. Now, some people look at it a different way, and their consideration is that there's an overpopulation problem as it is. And folks like you want to want to walk around living to be 300 years old and have a gang of kids, you could create a mess. All right. Well, I have three kids, but uh, that's enough. That's more than I was going to have. Uh, but yeah, it, it we do. The, you have to do the math, though. How much would the population grow? And we, I, I'm actually working with a number of people to try and calculate this. Uh, a mm. couple of economists in London um, that we're working on. So this is this is really a problem. I I agree with you that if this comes, and I would actually say when this comes, when this comes, this is. I mean, it's coming. There's there's dozens of companies working on drugs. Uh, the science is here. So let's say it's coming anyway. So. We have to deal with this. How are we going to deal with it? Well, let's first of all understand what the future looks like. We can't look backwards, all right, because no one's ever invented this stuff before. So we have to look forwards. What's the world look like? Um, in terms of population, it's not as bad as you might think. If you stopped aging today and everybody just went on um, forever, the population growth rate would be less than the rate of immigration. Now, that's not... That can't go on forever, of course. But what we find is as people are healthier, especially in developing nations, they have fewer kids. So the calculation shows that it would eventually taper off. So the human population will taper off about 9 to 10 billion people and then stay there. And that population will be the happiest, healthiest people in the world. Now, how seen. do they predict that? Because I was having this conversation with someone the other day that as people become more affluent and society becomes more urban – people will have less and less children and the population will stabilize. Is that the theory behind this? Right. Well, actually, education is a major part of education. that as well. Yeah. Women's education is the main thing. Uh, but also just being healthier um, lifts the, the wealth of a nation. And by women's education, do you mean extended education so that they, they 
pursue careers? Is that the, the idea? Or is it, I mean, obviously, most people understand how babies are made. Like, where, where is, where's the education contributing to a lower population? Well, so my understanding is that the, the first thing you do if you, if you educate young women is that they can make choices for themselves and they're not just subjugated. Uh, you know, most men uh, would like to have more children. So, right. So you're thinking of, like, third world and... Right, the real developing world. But that's mm-hmm. where the population is a real problem. In Europe, they actually are struggling to keep up with their population. Uh, you know, with, they've got a, an aging tsunami, so to speak. Same with Japan. The average farmer in Japan is 65 years old. They've got a real problem. China's about to head that way too. And that's going to drag the economy of the planet down, and it's going to be a real problem. We're going to waste so much money on keeping older people alive for the last 10, 20 years of their life with dementia, frailty. That could be trillions of dollars. Just $50 trillion just in this country alone that could be spent on figuring out how to solve global warming, better education, the environment, saving the, the one-third of species that are becoming threatened. That's why I think tackling aging isn't a selfish act. It's probably the most generous act, act mm. that I could give the planet. That's an interesting way of looking at it. 